there welcome back to my channel or welcome if it's your first time here i'm fanula and last week we talked about spring blooming bulbs which got me all focused on tulips which i happen to absolutely love we talked about spring blooming bulbs in the garden and i was planting out all these different varieties that the gophers do not particularly care for but unfortunately tulips are adored by gophers I happen to love them more, so I've decided we're gonna plant some in containers this week. But let me tell you a little bit about tulips. They were first noticed as far back as, you know, the year dot. First found grown wild as a, as a wildflower in the steppes of Central Asia, and then noticed by people of the Ottoman Empire. So around the sixth century, the Turks, as what they are now, started collecting these bulbs and bringing them back. They were just fabulous, beautiful flowers adored by the sultans. So these bulbs were planted in the gardens of the sultans, and eventually they got called tulips, named after tulipan, which is the turban the sultans used to wear. So already we're in the sixth century, people are loving these tulips, they are throwing parades, they're having festivals around them, and they became a symbol of status and wealth and power. And like I said, the sultans would wear them in their turbans. It was the cutest thing. Here we are, all the way up to the 11th century. Persian poets are writing poetry about them, and European diplomats are noticing that there's a major big fuss all around tulips. They're seeing that the festivals are happening. They're seeing that people are obsessed. And the obsession started to spread. One diplomat to the Ottoman Empire decided to bring back some bulbs and gave them to Carolus Clusius, a botanist in a prominent university in the Netherlands who was studying medicinal herbs, medicinal plants. He gave the bulbs ostensibly as medicinal plants for Carolus Clusius to study. Well, they turned out to be so pretty that the Europeans started taking notice. And next thing you know, there was a little bit of a tulip craze going on. People started hybridizing, um, creating new varieties, and they were adored. In the middle of the 17th century, between the years 1634 and 1637, there was an incredible bubble of tulip mania. People were mortgaging their houses, people were selling their lands, they were causing wars and fights. And basically, at one point, one tulip bulb would cost as much as a fancy house in the middle of Amsterdam. Europeans absolutely adored these flowers. The varieties that they were being created by the hybridizers just kept getting more and more exciting and people were literally murdering each other over it. Bizarre, right? But like all big speculative bubbles, eventually that bubble burst and everything kind of settled back to normal. Tulips stayed popular for really, really good reason. And they're still grown wildly all over the world. Um, particularly in the Netherlands, it remained an incredibly they're still hybridizing over there. They are still loving them and growing them. And it is still a fabulous harbinger of spring for all of us. We all look forward to spring blooming tulips. We all look forward to them. And it is just one of my favorite plants to grow. But like I said, I've got a gopher problem in my garden. So I cannot plant them straight out in the landscape. So what I do instead is I plant them in containers. Nice big pots full of beautiful tulips. Um, and that's what I'm going to show you today, how we're going to grow tulips in pots. I'll show you exactly how to plant them and what you're going to expect from them. And this is going to keep them away from the pesky gophers in my yard. There are so many different gorgeous tulips that you can choose from. Um, if you're just going for one springtime display of one amazing group of tulips in your container, you can pretty much pick whichever ones you want. 
Uh, a lot of tulips were developed basically as annuals that you just grow them once, one time, next spring they're going to bloom amazingly, and then you just move that pot of tulips along. What I love about the Burrito Floras is because they've got some green in the petals, and if you can see this, this one is orange marmalade. It's got these beautiful tangerine and green petals. Absolutely adore the colors of this one. But anyway, like I was saying, green in the petals means extra photosynthesis, which means extra energy for the bulbs next year. And that's what makes it so great for naturalizing. Another variety or type of tulip that is fabulous for naturalizing here in Northern California are these adorable little Fosteriana red emperors. I love these ones, but I happen to like this one, Exotic Emperor, even more because it's got that green in the petals again, which I particularly love. But Fosteriana groupings, they're great for naturalizing around here. The Darwin hybrids. Those are a mix between the botanical, botanical tulips and the older, oh shoot, the Darwin hybrids. Those are a really great hybridized mix between the older botanical tulips and the newer big flowered gorgeous ones. And this is Banya Luca. Look at it. It's so stunning. This is another really great variety for naturalizing here in Northern California. We get cold enough at night, there's enough cold hours going that really encourages them to do well. So I'm choosing some naturalizers to put in my pots in the hopes that I can move them out into my garden next year and they will naturalize. Something might happen to the gophers. We're going to give it a go. Okay, so let's get going. Let's get going them in, let's get planting them into this pot. I like this pot because it's wider than it is tall. And when you're planting in containers, you can put these bulbs really, really close, closer than you would in the landscape. Because um, you're going for an amazing spring display next spring, and then you're gonna move them on out into the landscape for the ones that naturalize. You can, of course, plant any tulip at all in your containers, um, but some of them, the newer hybrids, you're really only gonna get one good year out of them. There are a few tips and tricks that you can do. We can talk about that in another video, but for today, I am planting naturalizers in a container. So we start with this beautiful pot that's wider than it is tall, and I'm gonna put some broken bits of pot in the bottom of the hole to make sure all the soil doesn't pop through, but then you do want good drainage. You start with excellent drainage. You do not want to drown these tulip bulbs over the winter. So it has to be good drainage. You don't want all the dirt to fall out, so you block that with some broken bits of pot or some other way that just doesn't let all the dirt fall through. And then you're gonna put some soil in until five, six inches. There's a kind of a rule of thumb with spring bulbs that you do two or three times the size of the bulb. So five or six inches. So I put enough soil in here that they're going to be five or six inches deep. And what I'm using is a really good fresh batch of potting soil that I really like. There's good drainage to it, great nutrients in it. Um, it's a very nice light mix that I know my tulips are really going to appreciate. So here we go. We've got the soil down to a depth of about five or six inches. Now I'm going to plant the bulbs. I like to plant them so that they're really close but not touching. So it's kind of like a finger's width between each bulb. And what I'm going to do is a really nice mix of these Veritifloras and the Fosterianas. I know a lot of you are gardeners already, and you know that it's pointy side up, 
and root side down, but just in case you're a newbie, you haven't planted bulbs before, pointy side up and root side down. When you're getting your bulbs out of your packet too, you're gonna to wanna to really look at them. These are really fresh, fat, beautiful bulbs, but you might've had bulbs sitting around your house for a couple of weeks, or maybe you dug up bulbs from last year. If you see any signs of mold, or if they're mushy in any way, you do not want to plant those ones. Toss them in your compost pile and just plant good, healthy ones. So as far as adding rose and flower food or bone meal to containerized ones, you don't actually need to. Um, especially if you're planting tulips that you're going to just have one shot and then next year you're composting them or throwing them out or whatever. Everything that bulb needs to produce amazing flowers next spring, it's all in that bulb already. But because I'm hoping to naturalize these in my garden, I am going to sprinkle a little bit of bone meal in here and a little bit of rose and flower food just to give them an extra little oomph to keep them going during the spring months. And probably I'll give them a little bit of foliar feeding too as the foliage begins to die back. I'll keep you posted on that one. Here in Northern California, November is really a perfect time to plant your tulip bulbs, whether it's in containers or out in the landscape. The nights are cold. It's already rained once on us. It's absolutely great weather. Once you start wearing sweaters and boots and turning the heat on in your house, that's a really good signal that it is time to get your tulip bulbs in. We live in this fabulous climate though too. You can pretty much plant tulip bulbs all the way up to January as long as you keep an eye on the weather. If it's super cold and super rainy and super wet, you don't really want to plant them then. Um, just keep an eye on the weather and be smart about it. Okay, they're all placed in here beautifully. I've mixed a little bit of the rose and flower food and bone meal into the soil here. And I'm gonna to top these gorgeous orange marmalade tulips off with some soil. Right now. So I did another two, three inches of soil on top of them. Now I'm gonna do something very, very cool. We're making a little bit of a bulb lasagna with these little red emperor um, Fosteriana groupings. They're really great. The bulbs are a little bit smaller and that's why I've chosen to plant those on top of my orange marmalades. And this is called bulb lasagna for obvious reasons. You get your bulbs, you do a layer of soil, you do another layer of bulbs, and another layer of soil. I think it's a cute name and I happen to love lasagna, so this is always a fun thing for me to do. And you can start imagining just how spectacular this is going to look next spring. You can see the bulbs are just a teeny bit smaller. Actually, they're, they're obviously smaller. That's why they're going up top. But when they all come out together and they're all blooming at the same time, it's going to be a stunning mix. One more thing I'm going to say about the bulbs. This little papery covering on them, this is a protective covering. You don't want to take that off. I'm going to leave it on there. And again, check every bulb as you're planting them to make sure they're strong and plump and good and solid. And every one of those were beautiful. Okay, I've got my bulb lasagna, my Fosterianas on top of my Veritifloras. Now I'm going to top it off with soil. Nice and even and firmed down because you want that contact. You want the roots contacted below and you want to get something nice and solid for the bulbs to come up through.
What you want to do is to leave a little bit of a gap between the top of the pot and the soil so that when you're watering, it stays in here and doesn't overflow. And this looks perfect to me. Speaking of watering, so we're heading into the winter months here in Northern California, which is when we get our rain. What you don't ever want is for these bulbs in this pot to sit in here and drown. So keep an eye on the weather. Um, you also don't want them to dry out completely. Keep an eye on the weather. What you want is for the soil to feel moist. Moist is a well wrung out sponge, not soggy and not dried out. So if there is like a week's worth of rain scheduled, you're gonna to want to cover this pot. If there's three weeks of drought scheduled, you're gonna to want to make sure you water it. You can set a reminder on your phone to just come out and check on them. Um, but yeah, I put my pots in a spot where I walk past them on a regular basis, but that they're sheltered if it's raining. So it's just off my back deck in a really nice, cool spot so that they get the chilling that they need and so that when the spring starts warming up again, that they're just gonna take off. So I'm watering it carefully. It's going in beautifully. There we go. Talking about weather, you are gonna to want to keep an eye out for unexpected heat waves also between the time you plant your bulbs and when you'd like them to emerge and start blooming for you. So for that reason, at my house, I generally keep all my bulb containers in a shady spot, like around the back of the house where the sun doesn't hit them, um, where they can start doing their development, putting down roots so that when the next time it starts warming up in spring, they're all ready to go. I can move those containers out at that point and just wait for the spring display. It's gonna be amazing. One more thing I wanted to talk about, because I've got gophers at my house, I live out in the country, I also have squirrels. So if you have squirrels at your property, you're gonna to want to protect it somehow from squirrels. What I do quite often, I grab a gopher cage, gopher guard, and pin it over the top. So that's always a really good idea. No squirrel can get through here to dig up your tulip bulbs to eat them. So you get little irrigation pins, pin down your gopher guard, and you are good to go. Not the most attractive thing, and you do want to make sure you take it away once you see the little sprouts emerge, but there you go. You will have bulbs. The squirrels won't have eaten them all by next spring. One final thing you can choose to do or not, depending on where you're going to have this container and how beautiful you need it to look until next spring, you can always top it off with a little bit of mulch. I really like this fine fir bark. It looks great. I'm not going to do it because I will be putting the gopher guard over it and the mulch would just be a waste. But if you want your pot to look really pretty between now and then, top it off with some bark. Then all you have to do Make sure it's regularly irrigated, regularly watered enough so it's as wet as a wrung out sponge. Then all you do is sit back, wait, and you're going to have a fabulous spring bouquet of gorgeous tulips. It's going to be amazing. So I hope this video was helpful. I had fun doing it. Um, tulips are extraordinary, and it is just the nicest thing to be able to continue on with this tulip mania in whatever way we can. I will keep you posted when they start blooming. You're going to be the first to hear about it. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to sit back, let this beautiful container do its magic. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know I had fun making it and I cannot wait to see the beautiful spring display that's going to happen here. There's so much potential in any spring bulb and tulips are particularly amazing. So don't forget, I'm in zone 9B. Check your own zoning before planting up your tulip bulbs. Get the timing right. Check with your local garden centers. Um, and be sure to drop me a comment or a question if I've forgotten to tell you about anything. But main thing is get outside, get your tulip bulbs.
bulbs planted and sit back and wait for next spring and the amazing garden you're going to have. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.